Welcome to our first Advocate Webinar of 2018. This one's on step therapy, and we've got some great guest speakers today. Uh, my name is Julie Eller, and I'm the Manager of Grassroots Advocacy, and I'm happy to welcome Anna Hyde, our Vice President, Michelle Guadalupe, our Director of State Legislative Affairs, and Carol Arbacheski, our Ohio State Advocacy Committee Chair and Platinum Ambassador. Uh, first, I'm going to pass it over to Michelle, who's going to talk to you all a little bit about what step therapy is. Okay, great. Thanks, Julie. Um, hi, everyone. Yes, I did want to just go over what, ther what step therapy is. Um, so this may have happened to you already. Um, this is when um, you have your insurance plan, and you know you and your doctor may go over you know what the appropriate treatment plan would be for you and what type of medications he or she would want you to take. Many times, though, um, insurance will require that you try a series of medications to see if they're effective before your plan would cover that originally prescribed medicine. Now, we've seen this for some of our patients who are newly diagnosed. Uh, we've also seen this for patients that have been um, you know, on a particular medication um, and have been stable on it. Um, so you may have gone through this um, step therapy. Um, you may have also heard it known as fail first. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so step therapy is something that many of our arthritis foundation patients have experienced over uh, the course of their time getting treated for arthritis or any of their other comorbidities. Um, and it's something that we have had on our radar for a long time. In the summer of 2016, we took a survey of our patients, of over 1,400 of our Arthritis Foundation patients and caregivers to ask what their experiences were with step therapy. And what we learned was pretty striking. Um, more than half of the respondents had to try two or more drugs before their step therapy was stopped. Uh, and we learned primarily that step therapy is thought of as a barrier to good care by most respondents. Uh, we learned that many of our respondents would like us to help or like us to help limit the use of overly burdensome step therapy practices um, and ensure that doctors have the prescribing power that they need to make sure that they can deliver the best care for their patients. And so we've addressed this in the states, and we're really excited to talk to you today about our opportunity to address it with federal legislation. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Carol now to talk a little bit about how the Ohio Advocacy Committee took action to help secure our guest speaker today um, and raise awareness for step therapy legislation in our country. Thank you, Julie, and good morning, everyone. Um, the Arthritis Foundation's Ohio Advocacy Committee has been in existence for about a year now in its present form. Um, and as we were brainstorming goals for the committee for 2018, we knew step therapy was something that was important to us individually and to the broader arthritis community. Um, we also knew that the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act is an Arthritis Foundation priority. And um, one of the co-sponsors, Representative Brad Wenstrup, is from Ohio, representing District 2, which is to the east and south of Cincinnati. Um, as such, several of our committee members had also met him through the years at various events. So we decided to include a webinar with Representative Winstrup as one of our goals for this year. Um, moving forward, the committee looked at the goals. We planned a strategy. Several members of the committee volunteered to work on the project. Um, however, before the ink was even dry on our plan, we got lucky. And uh, one of our committee members happened to attend a local community event where Representative Winstrup was speaking. Um, it wasn't an arthritis-related event, but she took advantage of this opportunity to ask if he would be interested in being part of a webinar supporting his step therapy bill. When he said yes, she followed up by contacting his scheduler in the DC office, and the rest is history. So in this example, all the pieces fell into place very nicely, um, but it isn't always that quick and easy. So in thinking about goals and actions to break down barriers to access to care and medications, what are some of the things that we can do to get creative? That's always the big question. Um, one is make it personal. Um, what do you, your family, your community care about? Who do you know? Who is your neighbor? 
does your representative sponsor a bill that is a priority for the arthritis community? What events does your representative regularly attend? Just show up at them. Um, together, we can make 2018 an incredible year for patients getting back some of their rights. Um, That's thank perfect, you, Beth. Carol. Thank you. thank you so much. Yeah, and we are just so excited for the Advocacy Committee in Ohio and thankful for the great work that you did in accomplishing this project, and we encourage as many of our uh, participants on this briefing, but as many of our uh, grassroots community members to really think about ways that they can engage at this higher level and uh, foster that relationship uh, with their members of Congress. And so now we're going to hear Representative Brad Wenstrup speak. Um, Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Wenstrup. I represent the 2nd District of Ohio here in Congress. But I am grateful for the important role the Foundation plays in providing resources and information to those impacted by arthritis. Now, I'm happy to speak to you today about my bipartisan legislation, the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. I introduced this legislation with my fellow doctor and congressman, Dr. Raul Ruiz of California. So as a podiatrist and a surgeon for over 25 years, I understand from personal experience how frustrating it can be a fight with an insurance company for the treatment that patients need. But that's what we do. We stand up on behalf of our patients. But it shouldn't have to be this tough. So one particular example is step therapy, or what's often called fail first. As you well know, when patients visit their doctors for a prescription, the treatment they are prescribed is typically based on a variety of personal factors, comorbidities, other entities that come into play as to what you can and can't tolerate and will preclude you. Treatment plans by doctors are based on the individual's needs and their doctor's medical expertise and knowledge of their patient's overall health. That's the bottom line. However, we see way too often what happens next after the prescription is the problem. So the doctor writes the prescription and it reaches the health insurer. And the insurer may refuse to cover it first. Insurers insist on a one-size-fits-all step therapy protocol and require a patient to first prove that another medication, one of their choosing, not the doctor's will not work for them. That's what we're talking about with fail first. Now, in this case, failure is not only an option, it's the only option before getting appropriate treatment, at least covered by the insurance company. So under the current system, patients are left with a limited set of options. Either try a medication that's not what their doctor recommends for their condition, or pay out of pocket for the treatment that they need. This is wrong. Very often, you may just be switching insurances. And then all of a sudden you're told you have to go back to a medicine that you tried before and didn't work for you. These decisions need to be made between the doctor and the patient. And I'm not saying the doctor doesn't have to have a reason for prescribing what they're prescribing, but they do. So too often with this process that happens, this leads to a delay in care, even health damage if a patient goes through step therapy and it's inappropriate. And when a patient fails to receive the proper treatment in a timely manner, their conditions can worsen. You know that. I also, when I get on the phone, when I'm combating an insurance company, and I recommend that they see the patient. If they're going to decide what the care should be, I suggest that they see the patient. After those types of entanglements with the insurance company, usually we get our way. It can be much easier. And I, I far too often see the damage that occurs with delays in access to medication, which means a delay in care. And it can mean visits to the emergency room, additional surgeries, additional visits to the doctor, or repeating failed practices, which makes no sense at all. Step therapy is, step therapy is by definition a one-size-fits-all policy, but we know that every patient is unique. And only the doctor that treats you can understand that. That's why I introduced Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. It strengthens and restores the doctor-patient relationship by giving healthcare providers the final say in prescribing the right medication for the patient. It allows patients to bypass the step therapy requirements in certain circumstances. The Restoring the Patient's Voice Act, Voice Act requires a clearer, faster, more transparent exemption process to be available when a doctor feels the step therapy would not be in the best medical interest of the patient. So this helps doctors bypass the extended debate that often happens 
with someone that never even saw the patient. This legislation would also require employer-based health plans to make the exemption process easily accessible on the insurer's website, including clear instructions and contact information for questions. Limits will be put in place as to how long a patient may be required to wait for a medication when an exemption has been requested. The goal of streamlining the process in this way is to dramatically reduce the amount of time and frustration spent on paperwork for physicians and patients. Also, we want to provide a better, faster process for getting people the individualized care that they need. Patients are one size fits all. Each one of you is different. Treatment plans shouldn't be either. My legislation addresses a targeted but serious problem facing patients, doctors, and our healthcare process across America. It's an important step toward restoring the doctor-patient relationship and ensuring healthcare remains patient-centered. If you still have questions about the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act, I encourage you to visit my website or call your representative. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to pass it over to Anna to talk a little bit more about the federal bill. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you today. Uh, our other sponsor of the bill, Raul Ruiz, he's a, a Democrat from California. Um, he was not able to join the call, unfortunately. He sends his regards um, and did send in a quote that you see now on your slide. Um, he is uh, also a medical doctor and uh, also has a master's in public health and public policy. So he is very passionate about public policy and about health care. Um, and we're really fortunate to have two sponsors of this bill um, who are very passionate about the issue. Um, it really, really helps us to cultivate champions on the Hill. So um, just a quick sort of rundown on, on where this legislation came from. Uh, it, many of you all know that we have uh, had step therapy as a priority at the state level for quite some time, and we've been very successful in getting legislation passed at the state level and continue to do so. Uh, for the first time last year, legislation was introduced in Congress on this issue. So that's really exciting for us. It gives us uh, another legislative priority on the federal level. Um, it was introduced last April, and we have 35 co-sponsors as of right now, which may not sound like a lot when you think about 435 members of Congress, but when you have new legislation that's just been introduced, it takes some time to build support, to educate members of Congress that this legislation is out there, um, and so 35 is actually a pretty good number for, for this stage. And it is bipartisan, which is also really, really important. And we are really working to keep it that way. As, as much as possible, we'd like to have an even number of Democrats and Republicans. So we feel really good about that. Um, there's broad organizational support. We've been working very closely with the National Psoriasis Foundation, the Epilepsy Foundation, Lupus and Allied Diseases, um, and a number of other organizations. Our provider counterparts as well, the American College of Rheumatology, uh, has made this a legislative priority. And we've been going up to the Hill uh, and doing some early education with members of Congress, and we're really excited in 2018 to make this a, a high priority um, and to really involve our advocate community as much as possible. I'm going to turn it back over to Julie. Yeah, so one of the greatest ways that you can check in and see what your member of Congress is up to on this particular bill is to go onto our website and check out our Action Center. Um, by going into the Action Center, you'll have two things that you can do that are really, really cool. The first is taking action on the federal step therapy bill. And many of you already have. Uh, we have this pre-populated, pre-formed letter that we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, but you can send it on to your members of Congress very easily right from our form. Um, and you can also use our Find Legislation tool to search Step Therapy and then click the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. And when you do, you can click this button here that says Show Co-Sponsors. With that tool, you can check and see if your member of Congress is currently co-sponsoring the bill, and you can choose what type of action you want to target them with, whether it's a thank you for being a co-sponsor or a request to really support the bill. We've got one more summary slide, so I'm going to pass it back to Anna. And for those on the phone, if you wouldn't mind muting your line, and uh, we might minimize some of the background noise, very much appreciate that. Uh, so Brad Westrop gave a good summary in his video, so we don't need to, to go into much greater detail, uh, but I did want to just make note that this legislation does follow along our model legislation that we helped write um, that's been used at the state level, and uh, we're, we're really grateful for that because uh, legislation that's introduced in Congress does target kind of a different 
set of people than, than legislation at the state level does. So, so it's nice to have consistent language with what we're passing at the state level. Perfect. And so this is just one more screenshot of what our action alert looks like in the Action Center. You'll have the option to both tweet or write to your members of Congress, and I encourage you all to really check it out today. Um, and now I'm going to pass the mic over to Michelle Guadalupe, who can tell you a little bit more about that state legislation that we were talking about. Great. Thanks, Julie. Hi again, everyone. Um, yes, as Anna had mentioned, um, we have been working hard in the states over the past um, three plus years um, to have um, some of these uh, laws being passed at the state level. So I wanted to make sure that you guys um, saw the map. And if for some reason you cannot see the slides, these will all be available um, at a later time for you to review. But we've had some great success in some states such as California, Texas, um, many of the states in the middle. West, Colorado, uh, West Virginia, elsewhere. Um, so really, uh, you know, this would make sure that there are protocols in place that are based on clinical guidelines and not solely cost. Uh, requires that um, appeals be determined within 72 hours for non-emergency, 24 hours for emergency. We have heard from our patient and provider community that, you know, when you are working with your doctor to get your much-needed medication, that the process could just take a really long time um, to get approval. So we really wanted to make sure that that is done in a timely manner. And then also having these established circumstances for physicians to override step therapy when medically appropriate, really making sure that, you know, you and your doctor know uh, the care that is needed for you. Your doctor knows, you know, what types of medications you had been on before, or they just know, you know, some of your other issues that you're having and what would work best for you. Um, so we were really excited that we had um, these different states um, have those successes, and we are continuing to have um, legislation in process. So this year is very busy, and many of our advocates have already um, taken an active role, whether it be through and if you could please mute your line, I'm hearing some background noise. Uh, we've already been having some advocates very active in providing testimony and for, um, you know, writing those letters of support and also looking at different media opportunities. So stay tuned. I know that we're going to be having um, much more success in the area, and it's because of all of you. So we talked about some of these states that had already passed legislation, and on the next slide, uh, we will go into um, a little bit more about what we're going to do to really uh, talk about these uh, victories and make sure that we educate all of you, um, all of our patients, as well as our providers. So we're really going to be focusing in on Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, New York, Texas, and West Virginia in terms of educating, because we have some great laws on the books that have just been implemented. Um, we will be offering webinars similar to what we're offering right now, but that would really go into detail on those new protections and what they mean for the advocates in those states. Making sure that we provide you all with information that we can then share with other advocates and providers, that we can story bank um, your experiences in our new Action Center, which I'll talk about here in a minute, and that um, we know that sometimes that everything goes as planned. Um, every state has insurance commissioners who want to hear from patients if there's anything that needs to be done. So if you are having any issues um, with getting your much needed care, uh, we will be providing you with the tools to provide that outreach to insurance commissioners. Okay, we had mentioned story banking. By far, having real-life stories that we can then share with legislators, as well as, in some, some cases, the media, um, have been the reason why we've been so successful. And we want you on the phone and anyone listening to this webinar to tell us your story. We would love for you to go to this Action Center. The website is down below. When Julie sends this information out later, um, you'll also have that information. Uh, but we really want to make sure that we can use your stories to inform our work and to make sure that we're connecting with you. So please make sure that you uh, check out our um, pilot site for story banking, and we'd love to have you take action today by visiting the Action Center. And as you can see on this screen, 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. As you can see on the screen, um, you all have been very active, and thank you very much for that dedication. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, so yeah, we just want to wrap up today with a thank you to all of our amazing advocates who made this webinar possible um, and give you all an opportunity to ask questions. So if you want to ask your question live, you can just simply hit pound six to unmute your line. You can type it in the chat feature or you can type it in the Q&A. Um, and one question that rolled in earlier um, was from a participant who would love to get a copy of the goals and strategic plan that Carol had mentioned for the Ohio Advocacy Committee. Um, and so we'll definitely try to share that information broadly and, and make sure you get um, those tools and resources so you can try it yourself. That would be awesome. Are there any other questions or concerns that people want to ask now? Beautiful. Well, then let's, let's wrap up and just remind you all that our next Advocate Webinar Series will take place on February 21st. Uh, it'll be at 11 o'clock, just like this one was, and the topic will be fundraising and advocacy. We're hoping to have some great guest speakers, so we do hope you'll join us one more time um, to really kick off this year strong in our Advocate Webinar Series. Thank you so much, and if you have any further questions or concerns uh, or you want to get a recording of this briefing, let me know. Uh, you can reach out to me by email at jeller at arthritis.org. Call me at 202-843-0094, or follow me on Twitter at Julie Eller AF. Thank you all so much for your work on this amazing briefing today, uh, and we look forward to chatting with you all again soon. Thank you, and have a great day.